Hi everyone and welcome to Me and My Golf. We're your coaches Andy and Pierce and it is the first impact show of December, Pierce. What are we talking about? Christmas isn't far away. Not far What's away, not far away. We've got a real gift for you right now because we're going to show you how this simple tool here is going to attack three killer swing faults which are ruining your ball striking. Let's take charge of your game. So welcome to the 16th hole here at the Asprey and welcome to the first impact show of December. Now the theme for the month, Pierce, is different. Obviously it's the last month which was training aids. Hope you enjoyed that by the way. This month we're talking swing faults. Now on the website at meandmygolf.com we have 14 different swing faults that we see a lot of golfers do. So we're going to select the main ones that we see that cause issues in the golf swing, Pierce, and with golfers. And we're going to really just look at irons today, aren't we? Yeah. Starting with irons. I think I have the majority of those swing faults as well. I think you've got all of them. <laughs> if, you're new to, if you're new to the channel please hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the like button but also we want your feedback what swing foot do you struggle with please post your swing foot down below and we'll have a look at see what the most common one is and maybe do a video for you towards the end of the month absolutely all right so we've got three yes what are we talking about first okay well first of all Pierce ball striking now yeah. we're going to really look at more so with the irons aren't we what two key things is it that we're looking okay. for with an iron that we want to do so look if we want to strike the ball well with an iron the first thing we want to look at is we want to see if we can get our low point after the golf ball. If our low point is after the golf ball, by that we mean when the club head is at its lowest point in the swing. If, it, if it's after the golf ball, there's a good chance of striking the ball well, getting the ball first. If we have the low point at the ball or before the ball, then there's a good chance that we can actually get the ground first and not the ball first. So hopefully you guys know we want that slightly downward attack angle with the iron. That's what we're really looking to do where we get the ball followed by the turf. Yeah. And then Pierce, it's pretty simple this one. Pretty simple, yeah. I mean, look, obviously, where is it centered? So is it, is it sorry, are you hitting it in the center? Sorry, are you or hitting a toe or hitting a heel? You know, if you're toe and heel, of course, that's going to cause you problems problems to the extreme as well. It's often, sorry, it's not very often that we see it extreme out the toe, but we can see out the heel, which isn't that extreme, and that's obviously the shank. We don't want that. But it's an extreme shot. It's an extreme shot. So the first thing we want you to do, guys, you know, if you are somebody who struggles with ball striking, you know that's fine, but also if you're not somebody who checks it, we want you to actually assess your ball striking on a regular basis. So we often get people to draw a line on the ground um, with some spray paint and hit shots and actually discover where that low point is. But also you can get some face tapes or some foot spray for the club face to actually see where your strike pattern is. That's the starting point then to create the awareness. Now we're going to go through the three most common swing faults that we see that cause issues with ball striking. And if you are somebody who struggles, then there's a good chance that you are doing one of these. So let's yeah. start with the first one, Pierce. So the first one is the sway. So the first thing you need to do is you need to understand, are you swaying? So the way we do this is we get a camera in front of us and we want it at the same height as the hands. That just makes things a lot simpler. So get it at the same height as the hands, bring square on. So imagine there's a, an alignment there, 90 degrees to that line there. So a sway happens when the lower body excessively moves away from the target through that line you can see on the backswing. And it just makes sense, doesn't it? As soon as I go through that line, it's going to be harder than to get the bottom of the swing after the golf course. So Definitely. that's this way. So the more you move this way, the more that low point actually moves with you. And yes. ultimately then it just creates a lot of inconsistencies of where that low point is. And, and uh, among other reasons as well. Yeah, if you're moving a lot that way, then you've got to move a lot that way. On the exactly. Way so let's go through a very simple drill that the guys can do at home, mm -hmm. Pierce, that's going to help train a better lower body and sort of eliminate any sway. Okay, so look, this is, um, this is just something that we do a lot and we're going to use this for the whole video. Okay, so we've got an alignment stick, we've just got a noodle to sort of tape to it. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my normal setup. This is how easy it is because you can do it all by yourself. So I'm going to take my normal setup here and then I'm going to place this to the side. Stick it in the ground there. Oh, need a little bit of help there maybe. Must be a bit of frost in the ground, Andy. Oh my <laughs> cold goodness for you. me, what's going on? Okay, should we go to California? <laughs> okay, so from here we can see there's a little bit of a gap between my leg and this red bit of a uh, noodle here. Now, the key is obviously we know that if you're swaying, you're going to hit that in your backswing. So what you've got to do is figure out how can I take a backswing and miss this. So there's a few things that you can do. You can flare the right foot out. So by flaring the right foot out, it might allow for a little bit of stiffness that you have in the hip. You can pull the right foot back. You may have to do a combination of both. That again can really help you rotate better in your backswing. But maybe just all you need to be doing is knowing that that is there, is just have some swings and be mindful. Am I staying away from this rod here? Am I staying away from the noodle? And I think the best one that we can really give people is, Let's give them a combination of foot back, 
flare it out a little bit, and then from there, feel as though the hips actually move towards the target. So you can see I've got a massive gap now between my hips and that point. Definitely, and if you do that again, poor space. If you're somebody who does sway in the backswing, feeling that you can create a bigger gap here will encourage you to turn, but also actually just keep you a little more stable and the chances are that you probably won't be doing as, as much as it feels but your lower body will be a lot more stable and you won't be swaying which is the important let's, thing let's go to that and i'll go with the square stance on this one so this is again let's just think on the 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 feel is that the reality will be probably that you'll still be very close to this you just won't be swaying okay so let's hit a shot then and just okay. put that feeling into a reality then please so from here foot back, flare it open. I'm really gonna feel as though this pocket here moves back and towards the target that way. And I should get a draw as well, by the way, when I do this. And it's usually a shot that happens when I do that draw. We do it a lot, obviously, because it just helps people stop swaying. So beautiful high draw. Benefit of that, limit, limits the ability to sway, but also encourages you to turn, which we know is also gonna be very good for you as well. Be decent. So what's the next swing for then, Pierce? Hanging back. So again, the way that we analyze this is again, we video from the front on view. It's always good if you can actually get a, a line coming out of the, the left ankle, the lead ankle going straight up in the air. And you'll notice there's obviously a gap between that line and my body. Now, what happens when you're striking the golf ball and you're hanging back, that line and that gap actually probably increases. So there's a bigger gap between the body and that line. So very simply, what we need to do is we want to close that gap. So. Generally, we like to see a bit of a move toward the target, then a turn towards the target, and we can see I'm getting more into that lead side. And if we think about where the bottom of the swing would be from here, it's going to be after the golf ball. And we can see here, we like to see that the lead shoulders over the hip, the knee and the ankle all in line there. If we are somebody who hangs back, we're generally going to be sort of more back on that right side. And so key to be able to get in this good impact to get this consistent low point. Yeah, and look, you, and you can be, you, your shoulder, your lead shoulder can be back of that line but you've got to have to have really good hands and you have to have that shaft length forward in order to accommodate for that. So it can happen. There's some good players who are there, but they're very good with their hands and getting that sort of angle. Off okay, so let's go to the drill. Same, obviously, equipment here. <laughs> We're going to use the alignment stick with the noodle. Yep, okay. And again, this is just really simple. I mean, the thing is, we want to try and keep away from so much the, the, the drill thing. It's more of just creating feelings. That's what we did with the other one. So from here now, you can see that this pipe is touching my lead knee. We know that in the backswing, I'm gonna come away from that. Now I like to really get the feeling and you're the same, Andy, is let's get that knee on there very quickly. So the knees are moving towards the target and then you turn around that stick. And it's very, very simple. Yeah, so we're really pushing towards that noodle now and creating that awareness. And I love this because again, lower body encouraging to move this way. You've got some feedback and some feel there. As you can see, Pierce gets that left knee on that as early as possible in the golf swing. There you go. And a lot more turf on that one. Ball followed by the turf. That was a better one than the first one, Pierce, there yeah. as well. Very nice. Third and final swing for Pierce, what do we have? Okay, early extension. Now, the way that you analyze this one is that you need to get a camera coming down parallel to our target line, but the camera has to be at hand height. So you're gonna measure out the hand height, obviously here. So have your tripod here, get it to see your hands and then tr track it back and make sure it's parallel to your target line. Now, early extension. So when we draw a line, it just goes on the back of the tailbone like so. And then if you were early extending, that means you're coming away from it either on the top of your backswing or more so on your downswing. So if you're coming in from that line a lot, it can cause all sorts of problems with strike, you know, the bottom of the arc, but more importantly, we can get some heel and toe strikes on this one. So we're very much talking about heel and toe on this one, and primarily the heel strike. So really sort of losing the posture, the body angles through impact, where the pelvis comes up and the chest, um, sorry, pelvis goes in, the chest comes up. So again, look, we're just gonna go with the same thing, very simple, some simple feedback and a feeling that's gonna help you really keep the pelvis back, stay over the golf ball a little bit more with the chest, and keep those angles. Okay, so again, this is going in the ground, it's going at the tailbone. So from there, we can now see, I'm just simulating the line. That's all we've done with, if we think about it, this rod here has just simulated all your analytical lines when you're yeah. drawing it. So from here, what we're gonna say to you is, let's make sure that's good, is that as I swing back, you almost wanna feel as though your right butt cheek goes behind the line almost. And then as you swing down, you stay on that line. Look at the room I have here now. I always think of Dave Phillips when he's talking about this, about how much room is created. And we can see now that the, the butt cheek is almost going around the left-hand side 
of that rod now. There's no early extension there whatsoever. Sorry, do that one more time for me. And it's really important, guys, when we do this as well, that we don't lean back with the head. I'm going to keep Pierce now to keep his chest forward or his head forward and the pelvis back. Really easy to start just leaning back into it. We want to keep the pelvis back, but keeping that sort of upper body leaning forward Absolutely. as well. And that really does create a good feeling of the lower body of what we want to do. And if you can do that, you're going to find the center a lot more often. Yeah. And because you're touching this a lot more, it will move around a little bit more. But this is actually a drill that I need to do because I tend to early extend in my downswing. So it is something that I should do. I wouldn't say I do do, I'll say I should do more so. Well, let's test you out. Let's see if you can keep that pierced. I want okay. to see if you can actually um, improve that pelvis in the swing for you. So the way I would have to do this is just do mini swings to start with. As you say, very keen to keep the head that way, turning the chest, but keeping the butt back. All right, so a shorter goal swing to help me to do that. Okay, you very nice. See. That was nice. And hold it there, don't move. Oh, so really see here, look, pelvis back, right shoulder down forward. He's kept his body angles through the through the impact, which we know that is so key to find the center of the club face. Yeah. Nice. That, it was pretty good. <laughs> but for me, um, it has to be a mini one for me to get into that. I can't stand there and hit full shots, and that'll be the same for you. So if you're someone who extends a lot and it is causing you problems, then you have to go mini to start with. Okay guys, so we hope you enjoyed the video there. Look, ball striking is so key. If you want to be a better golfer, then you need to strike the irons more solid. Now, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this every week and hit that thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. Absolutely. Now we have a fantastic coaching plan, which is live at meandmygolf.com, which is break 90. We've done break 100. We've also done break 90 as well. So if you are looking to break 90, we cover everything that you need in a six week coaching plan. Is it six weeks? I've forgotten. It is. It's a six week coaching plan. It's absolutely fantastic. If you want to go and check it out, click the link in the corner and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.